Hi, my name is Duarte Antunes. I'm an assistant professor at TU Eindhoven, and I'll be shortly introducing my research on network control systems. Before introducing a network control system, let me introduce a standard control system. Let us say that we want to achieve a given behavior for a system or a process. The concept of a process is quite broad, but think, for instance, on an autonomous car or on an autonomous airplane. A process typically has a state, a, an input, and an output. Say, for an autonomous car, the state might comprise its position, its heading, its velocity, etc. The input might be the steering wheel and the pedals, and the output might be its GPS coordinates. The goal of the control law is then to decide, based on the output, what should be the input in order to achieve a desired behavior. Let us now have a look at how this process is actually implemented over time. It simply happens periodically, we say assembling period H. At time zero, the sensors are sampled, the control in input is computed, and the actuators are refreshed. The process is repeated at time H, at time 2H, etc. Note that I have assumed that 1, 2, and 3 occur simultaneously, which is typically a reasonable approximation, since in most applications, the delays are quite small. Now, in a network control system, the controller might not be co-located with the process. It may actually be at a very different location, and therefore the process, say, the sensors and actuators, must communicate with the controller over a communication link or a communication network. Let us have a new look at how this process happens over time. Say, at time zero, the sensors are sampled, but now they have to be transmitted over the network to the remote controller. This happens only after a delay, which we cannot neglect now. Then, the control in input is computed, and it has to be transmitted again to the process, and it is again received by the actuators after some delay. This procedure can be repeated immediately after the actuators are refreshed, or at time H. Let us say that this happens at time H, so the sensors are sampled, and after a communication delay, the, communi the controlling input is computed, and after another communication delay, the actuators are refreshed. Note that now the delays can be quite different, since in a communication network, these are typically stochastic, and this is an important feature of network control systems. Moreover, it is also possible that the data is lost or dropped while trying to transmit. This might occur due to bit errors, buffer overflows, or many other reasons. And this is an important feature of network control systems as well. There are many applications of network control systems, and I will mention three. The first that I'll mention is computational intensive control. Let us say that we have a system for which a computational power is insufficient to run an advanced control law. Think of a quadcopter that because of price, weight, or some other constraints has limited computational power, but it is required to perform some advanced path planning and control algorithm. One option is to offload the computations to a ground station PC. The PC receives sensor data from the quadcopter, performs the computational demanding algorithms, and sends the control input actions back to the control. A similar application is cloud-based control. Here, a process is being controlled by a cloud server, which receives sensor data from the process and provides control actions to the process. You can imagine that in the future, this will be a quite popular application since it will allow to dramatic, dramatically reduce the price of some systems by offloading all the computations to the cloud. As a th third application, I'll mention vehicle platooning, and it is a, of a rather different nature. Here, the communication is actually used to ensure cooperation between 
the vehicles in such a way that they keep a certain distance from each other so that they reduce the fuel consumption due to air drag. Let us discuss now some research challenges for network control systems. From a broad perspective, the challenge is how to extend standard control analysis tools to network control systems. If you are either familiar with control systems or if you have read any standard control book, you will recognize the following as some of the standard tools. Root locus, NACA stability criterion, frequency domain analysis, optimal control, Lyapunov stability analysis. Now, the challenge in extending these tools to network control systems is that the timings in the control loop are uncertain. By this, I mean that I can run my control system once and have certain realizations for the delays and the packet drops. And I might consider that the system is behaving well. However, if I run my system again, and if the delays are large, and if there are many packet drops, the system might actually behave poorly. So how can we define stability? Because it might happen that the system is stable for certain realizations of the delays and packet drops, but it's actually unstable for other realizations. Moreover, many of the standard control tools I just mentioned rely on the concept of a transfer function from input to output. How can we define a transfer function for a network control system? Let us start with stability. Let's say that we plot a quadratic function of the state over time. State here means an offset from a desired operating plot point, and therefore we wish to drive the state and in particular this quadratic function to zero. If the system would be deterministic, we'd always get the same plot if we started the same initial condition. But since the system is stochastic, we might have several responses for the same initial condition, depending on the realizations of delays and packet drops. However, if we have a stochastic model for the delays and packet drops, we can define a stability concept called mean square stability, which can be explained as follows. Say that we fix a given time t1, and from all the possible realizations of delays and packet drops, we can be the expected value of this quadratic function of the state at this time t1. Now we can do this for every time t, and if this expected value converges to zero, we say that the system is mean square stable. It is quite a strong property, because if, if we can prove that the system is mean square stable, then we can conclude that for any possible realization of the delays and packet drops, the state will eventually converge to zero as time goes to infinity, although it can have some nasty transitories. The idea to define transfer functions is similar. Let us consider again our network control system, and let us denote the, the input by W to distinguish it from the input U to the process. This input might be, for instance, a reference signal. Let us denote the output by z. We know that if we apply a deterministic input, the output is not going to be deterministic due to the stochastic delays and packet drops. In fact, we can have several possible outputs. However, if we take the expected value, we will only have one function. Then we can define a transfer function from the input to the expected output, which is typically defined in terms of Laplace transforms. It turns out that we can often do the same for the standard deviation of the output. That is, we can define the transfer function from a deterministic input to the standard deviation of an output of a stochastic network control system, at least for certain models. The fundamental concepts that I have just described allow me to quickly provide a research overview on my main research results, which were carried out with several collaborators. It gets a bit technical now, and I have to assume that you're familiar with control theory. First, we define the concept of a second order frequency domain body plot, by which we plot the mean invariance, or equivalently, the standard deviation of an output of the network control system to a sinusoid with different frequency. 
This body plot fully characterizes the map between any deterministic input and the expected value of the output. Moreover, it allows to infer bounds on the standard deviation of output signals to any input signal. Then we provided an Nyquist stability criterion to assert mean square stability and another stability notion called almost sure stability. And we also introduced the concept of root locus for network control systems. Finally, we also derive results in the context of optimal control and map of stability analysis. If you want to know more, here is a list of research papers where you can find the concepts I have just mentioned discussed in much more depth. You can also find more explanations in the research sections of my webpage where you can also download these papers. Moreover, feel free to send me an email anytime if you have questions. Thanks for watching.